if you're talking about what contribution the pandemic is going to make to the future, yes. So I've been thinking about that quite a bit. I believe that people, uh, te technological pioneers like myself, have a very big responsibility right now to be developing um, ways to educate decision makers as the pandemic gets under control so as to ensure that the right lessons are properly learned and not just ignored. I think that it is too much to hope for that the general public will really substantially learn from this. I believe that the general public are pretty much certain to revert back to the status quo ante in terms of their thinking and just, you know, the whole thing is a bad dream. But there's no reason why policymakers and decision makers in, in, in positions of power should do that necessarily. They, on the other hand, should be in a position to actually um, adopt measures that constitute improved rationality with regard to all of this. So that's true at the narrow, in the narrow sense of um, infections. It's been a complete scandal for decades that so little development has gone into vaccines, uh, so little effort has gone into vaccine development and antibiotics and so on. There's masses of uh, really promising technology out there that should be funded at least 100 times more than it actually is. And if it were, and if it had been, then a lot of lives would have been saved just now, which means that it's a, and there's a fair chance now of actually persuading the people who really make these decisions that that is the case and therefore that this ought to happen now. Then if we go more broadly, um, we can look at aging, of course. We know that the coronavirus is hitting the elderly really, really hard. Of course, the elderly are hit harder than average by your average infection, but it's particularly steep in relation to the coronavirus. Um, so this may, with a bit of luck, uh, shine a greater light on the work that's going on to rejuvenate the immune system to the elderly, which is very promising now, and again, merits vastly more funding than it's actually getting, whether from the private sector or from the government. Um, and then more broadly than that, I think we're talking really about rationality about healthcare in general, that um, we, you know, we could potentially move to a situation in which it is recognized that the current reaction, the, the, the typical reaction to discussions about bringing aging under medical control is inappropriate. At the moment, when you talk to any politician about that, they, their first immediate reaction is, oh God, how will we pay the pensions? And then they immediately switch their brains off and decide that this is a bad idea and they don't want to know about it any, anymore. Right. So if we can now somewhat diminish that in favor of the principle that, you know, health care is now, there is an imperative to provide the best health care possible to all age groups, um, irrespective of the side effect of living longer that might occur. <laughs> right. Um, uh, you know, if we can get that into people's heads, even a little bit more than historically, then that will be a big silver lining.